Like any painter who has labored deep into the night, alone, experiencing numerous states of doneness on the way to placing a signature, Northwest artist Jack Gunter has learned that it's really the journey, not the finished piece, that is the artist's reward. As a graduate student in organic chemistry 35 years ago, Gunter worked in spectroscopy, the analysis of infrared, ultraviolet, and polarized light effects on molecules. He came to understand a process known as the elegant proof. It suggests that the most perfect solution to a complex problem is often a path so utterly simple and obvious that it has become invisible to those who are looking for it. Demonstrating an elegant proof in a research paper, Gunter realized, was the holy grail of enlightened scientific publishing. Somewhat encouraged by this new understanding, Jack published in 1974 his first book, The Gunter Papers, which he describes as a futuristic junior high school science curriculum and guide to the fourth dimension. During the 12-month period he spent carefully illustrating and hand-lettering the textbook, a passion for creating art began to quicken in the 24-year-old scientist. Artistically naive, in 1975 he accidentally stumbled upon the nearly forgotten art of painting with egg yolks and pure ground pigments. A lifetime love affair with color bloomed. One of your paintings? Yes, it's a work that I'm rather fond of. A good piece of abstract painting, don't you think? Yeah. Just, uh... Oh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's remarkable. Certainly got a lot of color. No doubt about that. In 1976, he exhibited his art in conjunction with an Andrew Wythe and family show in Sharon, New Hampshire. The rest is history, Jack Gunter style. It is ironic that Jack Gunter's current art project as a painter teams him up again with ultraviolet light and science. From egg tempera paintings to full color 3D holograms that leap off the wall in the absence of light is a simple matter of combining available emerging technologies. This brand new intersection where science and fine art meet has the makings of an elegant proof. This is a story about the path. It began with a simple commission. Paint a Renaissance style ceiling treatment with foreshortened goddesses gazing down on the card tables of a newly built casino and a wall mural that suggests a vast unreachable chamber. The client wanted stars in the sky to glow and for the figures inside the chamber to be seen as if outside on a balcony bathed in the last sun rays of the day. Gunter went to fluorescent acrylic colors for the effect and then went looking for the ultraviolet lamps. 
He Google searched and found a simple house-friendly compact fluorescent 15 watt 7 year bulb. This would later motivate him to create a series of UV activated paintings for the home. Paintings that were track light friendly without the need for unwieldy tubes or gadgets. It opened the door to a series of experiments in alternative spectrums and later to super phosphorescent fine art in 3D that would last until the sunrise. The first conundrum involved the harsh 70s look inherent in the Dayglow palette. Fine art that worked in UV light would be difficult to place in an elegant home. After 30 years of successful sales, Gunter's art graced the homes of hundreds of collectors. His mastery of pure pigments in the egg tempera medium is his trademark. The new work had to live comfortably in daylight and tungsten illuminations, as well as UV light. It was not an easy task to paint successfully in three spectral environments at once. Notice the decisions I made in the dark here was to paint this white thing green because it looked like that was the right color. Yeah. It's not. That's white. So I've been painting this thing green in the dark because that in the dark this looks like that color. But in the reality, I've taken a nice, perfectly white thing and painted it green in daylight. It also had to work in all combinations of the three in order to be free of gimmicks. Three-dimensional imaging has been popular for 150 years, but until holograms and lasers, the artwork itself could not stand alone without an optical device. A recent development in diffraction optics allowed Gunter to escape the first conundrum and create standalone art that works in 3D by simple manipulation of colors in a work of art that looks just fine on an average person's wall. It was a technology called chroma depth. Gunter began exploring the complex color scheme that would allow him to take a normal painting into an added dimension. He turned to his existing works to look for a natural, a painting that lived well in both worlds. of his wife in Paris worked just fine. So did his folk art image of Seattle's underground transportation system. UV lighting enhanced the effect and he modified an existing work to fit the new model. Then he went to the computer. Adobe Photoshop allowed him to fine tune the effect on images in his database.
then began to create a new series of paintings based on his studies. His first UV-activated 3D painting called Red Boat was auctioned in an arts organization fundraising event. It sold for 2,700 and the first conundrum was breached on February the 10th, 2004. Phosphorescent pigments also had recently been improved. A full palette of glow-in-the-dark colors utilizing strontium now allowed him to create long-lasting effects in daylight colors that stayed lit all night. To Gunter's surprise, his glow-in-the-dark paintings also caused a strong 3D image to emerge. The paintings even worked without the use of chroma depth glasses. Yeah, do that. That's good. Wow, that's really 3D. I mean, it's 3D without the glasses. I mean, the red almost comes out at you without the glasses on. That's the whole point. It does, doesn't it? They really... Yeah. That's what I think I did. I think I've actually managed to make 3D that doesn't need glasses, which is the first time in history. And then it, with glasses, it looks like twice as much 3D. The paintings prove so effective using a chroma depth color placement that in the absence of light, they stood alone in 3D to the naked eye. He could now overcome the first conundrum all night long in the dark. It was an elegant proof that took only six months to create. Recently, Jack Gunter helped 32 fourth graders at Utsaladi Elementary create their own 3D paintings. In the film studio of the videographer Michael Lino, he gave this same lesson to Michael's son, Jacob. Is that you should start this way and paint this way because that way your hand won't hit it on the way across. So start over here and work that way. I'll show you how to put the white here. We can do the white right now if you want. If I can get a different brush. Because this is phosphorescent. Now, there it is. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so just like, should I do it all the way up there? Yeah, do the inside in the back corner now. Okay. Right back. You want more white? Um, maybe there's you don't need it. Right in there, yeah. You, first of all, you want to get it right down to the edge there. Okay. Yeah, and now pull that across. Yeah. Oh, great! That's perfect. If I get a little black for you, then we can dark. do the dark part. Yeah. Whoa, look, that looks red. I know, it's pretty weird, doesn't it? It's, this, this stuff is really unpredictable. Now I want you to paint this side. Where? Just what you, hold it, let me turn on, give you a, paint that side with black. that, that's actually red, but. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you do the same thing on that side as you did with the white on that side. It's just the opposite, yeah, just smush them on there to get it, get your brush flat. Like this? Yeah. 
Okay, that's good. And you make it straight across, yeah. And then do, go inside here and get the inside corner where it's, yeah. That? Mm-hmm. And bring it right down to that edge of the crater. Right here? Yeah. Okay, now we have the brush. Now smudge that in that way. Bring it all the way. You just, just keep bringing it over and bringing it over. And bring it right up to the edge of the crater. Now do the same on the inside. And now this way, I keep going right into the white. Keep going, keep blending it. Now bring the white into it now. Bring the white over that way, too. Whoops. Whoops. Maybe I need a little bit more white. Okay. Smudge it over. Now, not, don't go into the edge. Just start, when the, in the, start halfway over. No, okay. yeah, start yeah, in there and bring it over. And sort of smush it around because you can mix those two colors together now. Cool. And that's cool. your transition. That's good, right there. You can imagine how these kids in the in fourth grade like this, all 30 of them, the last yeah. two weeks ago. And now you know how to make a crater forever, too. Yeah. But you have to always pay attention to where the sun's coming from. That's what you have to know. If the sun's over here, that will, won't work. Yeah. It would be the opposite. Yeah, it would be, yeah, be the opposite. And if the sun's in behind it or behind you, it's just more boring. So I usually always put the sun on one side or the other. It looks like, you know, it's like an old picture. The, um, the white looks kind of red, like the sun. I know, isn't that funny? Because I still, you know, all this stuff is still a mystery. Yeah. Well, first it was a drip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's oh. how it started. There oh. was a first, yeah. But then I realized that with the glasses on... It looks the, good, actually. It looks like there's, like, mountains. With, yeah. the, with the glasses yeah, on, yeah, Michael. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah what I've, got, it's, I've got glasses on. Oh, yeah. because that goes away now. Yeah. And that sort of lets oh, the, wow. the foreground... Can you just turn off the light for a second? Wow! Man, that brings this out. The, the cradle comes way out. I like wow. Oh, wow. Does that work? Zoom there. Ooh yeah. Zoom it in. That, like, comes off the page. The sun looks almost closer than the mountains. I know, that's because of why. The sun's too bright? Or? No. Why are the mountains further back than the sun? Oh, because of the green. Yes. So we'll, we'll put some more red next it's time like we get there. It's right at the line. Yeah. So it just looks like... We'll put a little red wash on it, and that'll sort of drop that green. It'll settle it down. There are many avenues yet for Gunter to explore. One path leads to visual perception of colors, Stenosasia is a rare perceptual affliction that causes 100,000 people out of 3 billion to see specific colors when looking at printed text or when hearing music. Gunter wants to create blocks of numbers or printed letters, or even poems and prose, that these rare individuals will see as beautiful landscapes on the wall. Can he use phosphorescent letters and shades of grey that will cause Stenosasiates to see his creations in 3D? Who knows? The rules have yet to be written. Gunter also plans to explore the infrared spectrum as a generator for colored fine art. It will probably involve heat sensitive coatings and point sources of varying temperature. These will have to wait. The door he is open to full color 3D and zero light leads to many rooms yet unvisited. He plans to work full-time with his current discoveries while he fine-tunes the techniques and its implications.